Salutations and welcome to another homecoming video. Uh, my name is Phil and uh, today we're going to talk about what to do now that you've hit 50 in terms of getting equipped and getting going. And I've got a couple of other miscellaneous things uh, put in there. There's a lot of things you can do at 50 once you've made that that climb or you sat in a couple of farms or whatever. Uh, but uh, a big focus, of course, is getting equipped and getting set up. But a couple little miscellaneous things will pop up here and there. Like one, if you haven't messed with the world of, of, of changing your outfit, uh, you're allowed to have like seven or eight different outfits in homecoming. And I highly suggest you go and you talk to a trainer and you can customize your appearance. You'll pay some money. But if you've been following my guide, money shouldn't be an issue. Uh, so you can you can do that. Plus you have free tailor tokens you've earned along the way. So you can do that. And then you can set up macros that do things uh, such as uh, this. Uh, wait, oh, for one right there. Boop. You can like change your outfit to your daytime outfit or your secret identity or whatever you want to do. It's pretty cool, but you, you can definitely do that. So uh, Google up how to do macros. They're very easy to set up. You have to fiddle around with those. If there's enough demand, maybe I'll make a video on them one day, but honestly, it, uh, we're going we're gonna to go on to other more fun subjects such as how to get your character equipped. Now, when you hit 50, you if you've been following my guide, you have a bunch of level 30 uh, IOs. One thing you could do is you could upgrade those to 50 IOs. Level 50 IOs are like 7 or 8% better overall. Uh, so you could do that. Spend a lot of money. It won't cost you too, too much if you buy those off the auction house. There's usually plenty to go around because a lot of high-level people have respect. They have them lying around, and they just throw on the auction house. If you craft them, they're going to cost you about uh, almost a million a pop between the recipe and the crafting cost. So uh, it can get pretty expensive. And if you're getting it to a million a pop, there's another option that starts to come available around that that's just as good and, and actually a lot better, I should say. And that is what we call sets. So we're going to go to the auction house. Remember, you can open that with forward slash AH. OK. And you can look at enhancements here. And there's there's two main categories, the attuned and the crafted enhancements. And they both look very similar. If you notice crafted enhancements here, it says other, accurate debuff, accurate healing, accurate to hip debuff, confuse, etc. If you hit attuned, accurate defense debuff, accurate healing, accurate to hit debuff. It's got a couple of other types like the blaster archetype sets and you, you get to a couple of extra options here, but they're very similar to each other. And that's because for a lot of these, there are two different versions. So what is the difference between, you know, these sets that are basically IO sets and the attuned ones? The difference is that sets give you what's called set bonuses. Uh, and so with set bonuses, uh, when, you, uh, uh, when you have particular number of pieces in a set, you get extra bonuses. Like this one will tell you, for example, if you have two pieces in the set, it, re it improves your recovery by 2%, 2.5%. You have three pieces, it increases your lethal and smashing resistance by 2.25, and mes resistance by 3.75, so on and so forth. Uh, you, can, you can see here, if we take a look at analyze weakness, there are six different pieces. And for most of your powers, they have six different slots. So if you equip one of these each into a power and you get all six, you'll get the most uh, set bonuses you can have. And you can mouse over and it will show you it, it goes all the way up to increasing lethal and smashing resistance by 4.5 and mes resistance by 7.5%. So you get a lot of a lot of bonus for this one. That's set bonuses in a nutshell. The difference between these IOs that have levels on top of them and these attuned, there's two big differences. One is you can buy, uh, when you buy an attuned, you notice the attunes don't have levels on them. That's because they automatically scale, you know, up to a point, even if you buy them at lower level, it doesn't matter what level you buy them at. In the description, it'll tell you that this enhancement has a minimum level of 10 and these will scale up uh, as you level up. There's some other details there, but suffice to say, these these kind of scale up with you as long as you meet the minimum level requirement. If you're below that minimum level, uh, then then they're not going to help you a whole ton. You won't be able to equip them really. Uh, 
the other thing to keep in mind with these attuned sets is that the set bonuses only work if you're of that minimum level or within three levels of that minimum level, I should say. If this one has a minimum level of 27, if you exemplar down to level 10, the set bonuses will not work. Now, with the with the other types, with the levels on them, they, uh, they, uh, they, do, 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 do. let's pull one of those guys up here. Uh, these are attuned sets. Let's try the unattuned sets. These have levels on them. Now, what happens is if you buy one of these, let's say you buy the level 30 version, a couple of things. Number one, once you go past level 30, it will continue to get a little better and better and better. Though, keep in mind, while attunes do get better, a lot of the lower level attunes do have a limit where they stop getting better. So you have to kind of read the details to figure that out. The other, uh, the other thing about these guys is, uh, is if you are more than three levels below the level that's on them, they will no longer work. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, the set bonuses will no longer work. So this is important in something like Touch of the Nectus, which is a level 50. This means if you exemplar down below 47, the bonuses won't work. Attunes will generally have a bigger level range on a level minimum on them, and those set bonuses will work for more levels as you exemplar down. So attuned are simply more flexible. So why would you ever buy these guys here? And mind you, you might notice that you want to buy like a level 48, 49, 50. You want to get the 50 because it has the best bonuses. But why would you buy this? The advantage that the level ones have over the attuned is that they can be leveled up even more to 51, 52, 53, 54 with, uh, with some enhancement. Uh, uh, I forget exactly what they're called. They're at the merit vendor under salvage. Enhancement improvements, let's call them, uh, that you can use to bump these guys up. It costs you a big investment, but you know that can be useful. So generally speaking, if you're playing like a farming team that's only going to be farming, ever, ever, ever going to be farming, then getting those 50s and leveling them up is a good idea. If, uh, or if you're only going to be super doing the high level content. But if you're going to be running with your friends exemplaring a lot, I usually suggest the attunes. Now, when you take a look at your powers, and, and here's this character's uh, enhancements here, there's a lot of powers and a lot of set bonuses on each one. Now, you know, I mentioned before, like one of these set bonuses will say increase damage by 2%, increase recovery by 2%. That doesn't seem like a lot. But the thing is you have a lot of different sets and these bonuses will add up and there's so many different bonuses. This can be a lot to kind of keep track of. One of the other things to keep in mind is a lot of these set bonuses address defense. The end game uh, sets are very focused on helping your defense as well as recovery, recharge speed, a couple of other elements. But a lot of these have caps. You, you, you can only go up to a certain amount in these. And then you start wasting, you start wasting your, your sets and your set bonuses. And you should probably use other sets and diversify a little bit. You might recall before one of my videos, I talked about the need for diversity uh, in your enhancements. If you're using regular IOs, and like here I got recharge rate. If you're using regular IOs, the first two together give me 83% and recharge, for example. If I go much past 80%, then every percent point past 80 gives me much, much less. So if I put another one in here, instead of getting another 40%, I'll only get like 10, 15%, maybe less. And, and then if I put in a fourth one, I'll get almost nothing. Uh, well, it kind of works that way with set bonuses as well because they can hit your character's limit. Another rule about set bonuses is you can only have the same set bonus five times on a character. If you get the same bonus again, like I've got multi-strike a couple of times here, so I'm getting that bonus, you know, basically doubled. But if you continue uh, to stack those guys up, you're going to run into an issue there. So how can you keep track of all these moving pieces? That's not that's to say nothing of the fact that some of my powers, for example, like stealth, give me a defensive bonus on a lot of different defenses, and and there's a, a limit to defense. I believe it's 45%. But then you have resistance. So uh, defense is basically, from what I understand, your chance to not be hit by attack, and then resistance is your chance to, or is a, is a reduction of incoming damage. So what happens? Uh, when when you have uh, you know some powers that also get get into that that can be a lot to kind of keep track of uh, 
Well, there's a couple of things to help you out. One is you probably notice that up here, I have my numbers posted for uh, for my fire, defense, and resistance. This is a fire farmer character, so those are important stats. You can put those up on your screen by going to powers down here in the lower right hand corner and then click on combat attributes. And there's all kinds of attributes that you can go through here, including damage resistance and defense. And you could take a look at all of those. And on any of these guys, you can right click. If I want to take a look at my lethal resistance, I can right click on that and say monitor lethal resistance and it'll add it to this list over here. I usually like to have my money on there. On higher level characters, I like to keep track of their resistance. Uh, these are fun things to kind of keep track of. And if you get like debuffed, it'll show you in real time what's happening there. And then, you know, as I activate my powers, uh, you'll see those numbers go up. So it's very, very useful. Right now, I have a lot of my toggles turned off. So I don't have, I basically just have my set bonuses for the most part factoring in there, right? But if I go ahead and, uh, you know, activate my powers, which, you know, uh, first, let's get into outfit here. And then if I go ahead and activate those defensive powers one at a time, you'll see a lot of those numbers start to climb up eventually. After I get to the right power, I think. Think of some of those. There we go. There's a number going up. And we put on fire shield. You'll see my fire defense go up to 90. Now it turns blue. What does that blue mean? It means that I've hit my fire resistant cap. And it can't go up any higher. A brute has a cap of 90. I think a tanker has 95. A lot of classes, they're only 75. Now, one thing to keep in mind about resistance is every point of a higher, as you get up higher and higher in resistance, every point becomes more and more valuable, right? If there's a thousand points of damage coming in, I have 90% resistance. And there's a thousand points coming in, I'll take 100 points of damage. The tanker, who only has five more points than me, only takes 50 points of damage. He takes half as much. Now, Compare that to, let's say, if I had 50% resistance, I would take 500 points of damage. If I bumped up to 55% resistance, I would take 550 points of damage. That's 10% more, you know, 10%, uh, I'm sorry, if I, well, let me start over. If I have 50% resistance, I take 500 points. If I have 55, I take 450 points. I take 10% less. So the difference of those five points in the 90s is a lot more significant than in the lower levels. So kind of keep that in mind as well. Pushing every single point as you get higher may not seem like, oh, why am I worried about those last few percent? You worry about those last few percent because it's a dramatic increase of that incoming damage. Um, so keep that in mind. Now, this is a lot to keep track of, and this is a lot of moving pieces. And the set bonuses, when you go to buy some of these off the auction house, you're going to see some are, are cost a lot more than others. Uh, Tetch of the Nectus here is about a million a piece, so that one's an easier one to get. That's an easier set to get. But if you go for, I don't know, if we go for Armageddon here, which is a pretty purple red set, you know that's going to cost a pretty penny. It's purple. And if we hit the price check here, we can see it's 15 million a piece. It would cost me over 100 million just to do this one power. So prices are also a big, huge factor. A lot of things to kind of keep track of. So one question I get is, can you make a really good character for cheap? Well, you can. Uh, it's cheap being a, a hundred to two hundred million. This character here is a fire farmer. Cost me a hundred and fifty million, roughly, maybe two hundred tops, and can handle plus three uh, time uh, times eight. So can do a lot of farming pretty much on the cheap. This is a lot of moving pieces to keep track of, as I keep mentioning. So how can we build something, keep track of all these moving pieces without constantly buying and trying out new things and, and try, then trying to sell them and, and losing a lot of money on the auction house? Well, one way is with a program called uh, MIDS. And let's pop up this guy right here. MIDS is a program that lets you kind of build your character. This is the character you just saw. This is her MIDS build. And it will, it will allow you to see all of your totals. So you can see here, for example, that I've got 124 resistance capped at 90%. So I'm kind of wasting some opportunity there. Uh, but I have very low toxic and psionic, which makes sense because I'm not there to, to tank for most things. Um, if I go out adventuring, I'm going to do kind of okay against smashing a lethal, but toxic and psionic, I'm just going to get destroyed. 
shows you important things like your recharge speed, you know, how fast your things are recharging. That's better. All right. So on this one, you can see region is 306%. And recharge is 215%, which means my powers come back really, really fast. Uh, they're going to recharge 215% faster than normal. And you can kind of see a lot of different, the different, you know, set bonuses. If I mouse over here, it'll, it'll give me, it'll give me a lot of those set bonuses and how they work. So this is, uh, this program will help you. Now, this program is not the easiest one to use. It is pretty clunky. I will not lie. I could do a 30 minute to an hour video showing you how to use this and that would be beyond the scope. Uh, there are a couple of YouTube videos that kind of go through this. Uh, there's uh, there's uh, also some forum posts that also go through this. For now, I'm going to point people in those directions unless I get enough demand to make a detailed long video on how to work this program. But suffice to say, I wouldn't tell you to do this if I didn't think it was, wasn't worth the time. If you're going to get into doing characters and sets and you want to do them right, you really should come in here and start playing around with this so that you're not wasting too much. You can make sure that your defenses are where you want them to be, especially if you're playing tanker and brutes. You're going to want to really focus on these defenses, uh, defensive numbers. But even if you're playing an offensive character, you're going to want some defenses when you're playing high-level content. You're going to make your defense as good as you can, and you can do that thanks to epic power sets and the such. One of the other things, if you didn't know, you could do if you're playing a hero, you can get the villain epic sets. This is a hero character, but I end up getting Moo Lightning, which is from the Moo power set, which is a villain power set, because you switch over to villain. You can switch over to villain, do that quest line, and then and then go back to hero. You can change your alignment very easily in Pocket D uh, at, at the bird. So I highly recommend that you do that if you want to get your villain power set. It's the only way, I think, to get your power set. But that's kind of a 30,000 foot view. I'm just trying to put, put point you guys in the right direction uh, and, and, and in terms of how to build with, with mids. But that's, these are the directions you want to start looking in in order to get to your, uh, to start becoming an effective character at level 50. If you just do IOs, you don't do sets, uh, you'll be able to get through some questing content and things like that, but you're going to be pretty uh, pretty weak compared to people who even spend a hundred million buying up some sets and you don't have to do one or nothing all approach if for some odd reason you don't have a lot of money you can go ahead and buy some sets and some ios and you can mix and match until you can get into all sets but in order to do that effectively and efficiently i should say you're going to want to plan ahead using something like mid so i highly suggest you do so if you have questions, feel free to come and join us. We have a great community uh, over on Reunion. Uh, the link's in the description below. You can join our Discord community. You can come and ask questions. And I'm happy to sit down with any of our guild members and help talk them through some of the process. I've already done it a dozen times. Talk them through this process. Help lead them kind of in the right direction. And we have build experts that will help you build your character uh, directly. So come and feel free to join us. I'm at Wildlight on Reunion and I'm at JC Servant on Discord. And you can, you can friend me and we'll get you into the Discord server and get you into the SG and have you be part of our weekly activities today. We're doing two task force runs. So those are fun to do. Speaking of, before I go, uh, task force runs, there is what's called a weekly strike target. That's a particular task force that you can run that will give you double merit rewards, which can be up to like 80-ish. It will give you, uh, what for a level, your level 50 character, it will give you what's called Notice of the Well, which is going to be in my incarnate video, which can be very useful there. So it can be very, very helpful. So that's it for this video for now. Again, put your questions down in the comments below or come visit me on Discord. I'm happy to help you. And then come back, uh, come back for my incarnate video later. Have a great day.